And 90% of that is probably very exciting as the leader. Oh, yeah. You're going, oh my gosh, yes, I'm not getting all the texts. Yeah. But 10% may be this like, oh my gosh, do they even need me? Yeah. Do I even matter? Yeah. What am, what am I here for? Mm-hmm. Have you ever felt that? Yeah. So this is how my second business actually started <laughs> was I walked into the dance school and I had delegated so much out that they didn't need me. I mean, I delegated everything. And all of a sudden, I walked in, had nothing to do that day, walked in, and there was a few key players, and they were in a meeting. And I could tell I was interrupting, and they were kind of trying to go, what do you need? Like, do you need anything? Because we're doing something here. And I, it was so exciting, but the excitement wasn't there for me as much as as almost like a sadness of, Mm -hmm wait, this is my business and why, and I, I think it took me a little bit to kind of grieve the moment of I did this and I did it on purpose, but now I was missing some sort of like fulfillment. I was missing, well, where do I fit in? So I, I decided, okay, I want to start to continue to educate myself. What is next for me? How can I continue to really step into my passion? And that's how foot traffic actually started was I wanted a place where I got to teach others and share because this is one of my passions. So it's exciting, but you want to make sure like we're, a lot of us are workers. We like to work. We like to get in the business. You like to make a lot of the decisions. Yeah, right. So you got to make sure you find a place for yourself and you really decide what do I want this to look like. That's hilarious. So yeah. you you said, well, they don't need me. I'm going to go start another business uh-huh. where I can feel yeah. needed. And I could have stayed in that business and said, you know what? No, I'm going to I'm going to take this to three locations. I'm going to franchise it. I'm going to But for me at that time, I kind of felt not complete because it's still growing, but I felt like this was what I was supposed to create. And now it was time for me to go and give back and share and teach people because it is sad when I go to a conference and I'm enjoying it and I look next to me and the woman is texting her people and then emailing and then she's running out in the hallway. I want to help that person who is the business is her. It is him right there, just consumed by it. And that's, yeah. I think, where I realized my real passion of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really share what I've learned over the years. So what was this kind of net result that you were feeling once you've you delegated, you got the team to make the yeah. decisions for you? How did that feel? I mean, definitely two sides. It it felt incredible because it's still it's still the feeling. I am still here with a business that is running right now. They're open. I am not even there in the state, right? Um, and I won't even be there today at all. And it's running without me. And people always say, well, when will you retire? I don't see the need to retire when you have a business that can really truly run without your every need and every decision to be made. So it's a really exciting and empowering feeling. And I think a a sense of security, right? To know that if something were to happen to me, that business will continue to produce revenue for my family because the business doesn't need me. So my husband can still take it on and it will run without it, without me. So definitely a level of security and all of that. But then, yes, there's always, okay, but now what? What's the next challenge? What's the next? So you've got to be really careful that you're not constantly just starting because it can get really exciting to start the next business and the next thing and the next thing. Um, but is it truly at a place where it can continue to run and run like a well-oiled machine? Yeah, that's a, it's an incredible way to to know that you've leveled up in business. Yeah when you don't need to be in it every day for it to be working. And, uh, you know, Dave Ramsey has done this so well, and now he's kind of focusing on the new things and the broken things. And he loves doing that stuff versus the day-to-day, the maintenance mode. He's got an incredible leadership team where he doesn't have to be in every meeting and make every decision. I mean, it would crush him. I mean, with over a 1,000 people and all the decisions that get made around here, you've got to learn to let go and Mm -hmm. do it as early as possible if you want to get to that next stage in business. And I think your ego has to drop of my way isn't the only way right? There are other incredible ideas. And sometimes you just got to let go and let somebody else say, hey, I've got an idea. Mm. So as part of this process of delegating, we talked about having systems and processes in place. We know that that's important when you begin to delegate and train. What were some of those systems and processes that you put in place that was really a game changer? I think the biggest thing is the decision making right? Putting policies into place and and looking at where are the bottlenecks or what are some of the frustrations? What are things that are happening? So if somebody comes back and they're upset, um, if a teacher is late 
for a class to start. That would happen. You know, we were hiring kids right out of high school sometimes, right? We're hiring the 21-year-old. What happens when she's 10 minutes late to class? What will you do? What is the policy? We didn't have policies. We would just go, oh, no, now what do we do? Who are we calling? Are we getting a sub? Is she coming? What's happening? Are we refunding them? Are we giving them 10 minutes extra? Then everybody else is delayed the rest, the rest of the day. So we had to look at what are the biggest frustrations What are the most common things that are happening over and over again? And then how do we start to say, not in the heat of it, what do we do? But hey, let's talk about what happened yesterday and what would be a good policy to put into place in the future. Now, I know the word policy sounds so negative, but it's really just What is the system that we would like to do to make sure that we're still giving a great customer experience even when we mess up? Yeah. You can wow people in mistakes, right? We talk about branding a lot on on this podcast, and a strong brand is consistent. And when you show up and they go, well, last time I was here, the process was this, and I got a refund. Now you're telling me you guys don't do refunds? So having that process in place not only helps your whole team make those decisions, but it does create that customer experience where they go, I know exactly how they're going to deal with this. They've been very upfront. They've communicated this well. And the customer goes, I trust them. I like them. I'll do business again. Yeah. And especially when you have multiple team members fulfilling, right, in that same department, you have to say, listen, I know you thought you could stick around for an extra five minutes, but then they're going to expect it from the next person and the next person. So we've got to be on the same page. We've got, and that's where you can get certain people involved and say, help us make this decision together. What would feel really good for you? And then let's come up with a unified way of doing it. And then let's make sure everyone is on the same page. Yeah. 